Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Johnson and welcome to yet another advanced Java Chess Engine tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be starting with the basics of actually writing the UCI protocol. But before we get started, be sure to click on the link in the description below to this website displayed here. This is the official place to go to to find out exactly how the UCI protocol is supposed to work. Uh, and you will notice that there's quite a lot written here. and uh, just don't get uh, disheartened by all that. A lot of it is comments. You'll notice a whole big section of comments to one little line of actual UCI protocol. And these descriptions are very helpful to figure out exactly what you're supposed to do with these inputs and outputs. Another way that we can learn how to use the UCI protocol is through Arena. If you hit F4, to get to the engine debugging, you can see the ins and outs of the program. So you can see the arrows pointing to the right are what Arena is telling the engine, and the arrows pointing to the left are showing what the engine is telling Arena in response. And so there's a back and forth, and you can uh, follow that just by loading in an engine. I'm using Herman, but each engine works, will display a little bit different input and output. And that's because you don't need to implement all of the features that the UCI protocol has. There's a ton of features that we're just not going to be able to uh, work with. We, our program maybe won't have those features that are possible. Perhaps we're just being lazy and to get started we're not going to have every single feature that we already could implement. Um, another thing is that whenever you output or receive text that you can't make sense of, just ignore it. That is part of this protocol. If it doesn't understand it, ignore it. And this way, our engine can, for instance, output a printout of the way it visualizes the chessboard. And Arena, or whatever other graphical interface you are using, isn't going to crash. It's just going to ignore it because it can't really understand those lines. And some programs like uh, Fail and other famous engines have outputs like that for debugging reasons in their uh, UCI protocol. Now, at the very bottom of this page, there's an example. And the, the example uh, has a detailed description of why those inputs and outputs were made. This is sort of a mock up. It could go differently in the real engine depending on what settings and different things are set up. But I'd like to now go to the programming aspect. And feel free to read all of this on your time. Uh, I've already gone through it and I will just be explaining it assuming you already have an idea. And if you haven't read it, that's fine. You should still be able to follow along. So what I've done is I've created a new class called UCI, and I've created its uh, method here called UCI communication. This is the main UCI method here. And in the user interface, right at the top of the main function, I call the UCI communication method. And this will inevitably skip all of the graphical implementation because our UCI communication has a while true. So it's an infinite loop. It will never exit out of this communication mode. And eventually we will just get rid of all of the graphical interface part and rely entirely on UCI. But for now, we will leave it in the code. So what I've done is in our infinite loop, I have a scanner input. This is how we receive text and you have to import this class if you haven't already. Um, and then what we do is we input the string of whatever was stated, and we input it into next line. You could use the word next, but then, for instance, an input like uh, position uh, start pause would do, would input just the word position. After the space, it would consider it the end of the line. And so what we have to do is say next line, and then the entire position start pause would be imported into the string. All right, and now what we do is we have if statements. 
Now we only have to have if statements for all the things we understand. Remember, if we receive something that we don't understand, that means one of two things. One, we haven't implemented it yet, or two, we should ignore it, as the UCI protocol states. So there are a few inputs. I haven't set them all out, but this is just a, a starting setup here. What we have is UCI. This is an input. And then what we do is we call the method input UCI. If the input starts with set option, that means that according to UCI protocol, after set option, there could be a space and a bunch of different things. So as long as it starts with that, then run this method, set option. Now, in this case, I should actually change this to string um, input string so that our set option method will, oops, I don't need that word string in there, um, so that this method will receive that string and be able to figure out uh, what all the options it's supposed to set is. And then we have a method called isReady. And then we call the isReady. And this goes on and on. The most complicated method we have here is the position one. And I've added another one called print. And I don't believe this is in the UCI protocol, but if we call print, then it will print out a display of the board. So we can see, hey, the engine made an illegal move. Perhaps the board it started with was not the same as the UCI board is. So we can verify that sort of thing. So let's have a look at some of these. When we receive the keywords UCI, what we do is we output our ID name, our author, and then we set, tell it all the options we've already set, and we print out UCI OK after everything's been set up. Now what I've done is I've set the engine name to a static string here. And that way if we change from version 1 to version 2 or rename it to whatever you like, you just do it in one place and it will adjust into the ID name. And this stuff will be displayed on Arena or whatever other graphical user interface you're using. Then what we do uh, is we might receive options. And what Arena has done is it's looked at the options, which we haven't really set up yet, and said, oh, I like some of them, so I won't tell you anything about those, but the options that didn't like us set, it will tell us what to modify them to. So we can ignore that. Since we're not sending any options, we're not receiving any options, we don't really care about that right now. Then we have input is ready. And all we're doing is saying ready, okay. All that's doing is saying, yes, we are prepared to start searching or whatever. Input UCI new game just tells us we're starting a new game. If we need to have some code that sort of refreshes our engine or something, we can add it here. Um, all it means is, for instance, in Arena, it means that you did file new and that you're starting all over. So perhaps you want to clear out the hash table or something like that. Then we have input position, which I won't go into just yet, followed by input go. And here, we're eventually going to search for the best move. And then we will output that. And we might want to put this into a separate thread so that we can still receive text such as stop, which is this little uh, X here. And that would mean just prematurely stop the search where we're at and return the best move so far. And then input print. And here, we just print out the user interface uh, bit boards so that it looks nice. All right, now let's go back to this input position. Here's an example of something I've been a little more specific to the protocol with. What we do is we take this input, and there are several different kinds of text that can start with the word position. And you'll notice I use input string starts with position. And the protocol outlines all of this. I believe if I just search, uh, start, pause, here we go. So in position, it could either be position, space, fen, space, and then the fen string. 
this is an option, or it could be position, space, start, pause, which means the original starting chessboard position as displayed right now. And then after that, there would be space and moves. And it would be this move and that move and the other move. And the reason we don't just have a fence string and instead we tell it move by move is because that way we can look at threefold repetition, we get other information, or 50 move rule, all those things we can receive because we can see all the history of previous moves into this line. So we need a few if statements depending on what exactly is happening here. And that's why I take input string and I remove the word input. So let me just put a debugger stop here and show you actually line by line. So I'll run this code and we're going to ignore this send option here. You can go to the output and I'm going to send it, pretending I'm the GUI, and send it position start position moves and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, something like that. Those aren't real moves, but uh, they're just something to do. All right, hit enter. Now it, it goes to this method, input position, and the input is the whole uh, position, start, pause, moves. Now what we do is we evaluate that, and what this line did was it removed the word position. All right, now what we see is that it also contains start position. So what we do is we remove that word start position. We already can have dealt with it. And we set the board to the starting position just by importing this send string. Then we check, does it contain moves? Because if after start position there is nothing left, that means just start searching from the start position. But however, if moves had followed it, so for instance, now the engine, if I can uh, show you here, said position, start position, followed by the move E2, E4, which is the move I just made. So if I just told it to start from the original position, like this, you would see it would just say position, start position, right there. So if there's moves, then what we do is we change the input to get rid of the word moves, and then we'll have to do this for loop for each of the moves and actually make them, which I haven't yet programmed. And that is about it. So if I were to add, just continue with the code here, and add the word print, you would see that it outputted the board, starting at the start position. So this is basically how we're going to do it. We're going to add a few more features. Obviously, we have to finish this whole moves thing, convert the algebraic notation, figure out what move that was. There's a little bit of complications happening there. But it is fairly straightforward overall on working with this. So that's basically how I'm going to do it. And of course, as I said before, we might add in a few threads so that it can multitask here. All right, that's it. Until next time. Enjoy Java.